Police visit a person who criticized AOC on Twitter. Let's take a look at that. <laughs> Do you know the story is about, about this guy who is a, a liberal journalist who, what did he do? He agreed with someone that said something. He liked something about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Alexandria. And the police came to his house. I did you, yep. you hear this story? I did. Let me guess. I know what the story is, okay? Linking, tying this back to AOC is psychotic. Like, someone writes inflammatory uh, statements about a congressperson that does not warrant cops coming in and knocking on the door at all. But unfortunately, America's a police state. It, it, that's a psychotic story in and of itself, but like the fact that some people are just like, oh, this is AOC's fault is so stupid, dude. Police visit the home of podcaster after he criticized AOC on Twitter. So pull up the story because this is so crazy. This is like so crazy. communist China type yep. shit. I, I, it's so crazy that I feel like there has to be more to it when I heard about it the other night, but no, I mean, it's not. Yeah, it's 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 For the record, it's literally not communist China type shit. It is actually illegal to threaten uh, members of Congress. Technically, it's, you know, communist America type shit, I guess, because you can't do that. That's just literally the f truth. You might have an argument against it. I do. I, I certainly think it's ridiculous to engage in any sort of police action uh, of this magnitude. The reason why they probably are like on high alert uh, with regards to AOC is because she does get a lot of legitimate incredible death threats so that's probably the reason why but uh you know to say this is communist china type sh is kind of weird because it's literally a communist america on april 1st aoc did a live stream with michael miller the head of the jewish community relations council of new york she was asked about peace between israelis and palestinians her response was incredibly underwhelming to say the very least now if you oh, that guy didn't even threaten her by the way oh no, no no i know i know i know i know i was gonna say like it's completely preposterous of the Cop showed up at her, uh, this person's doorstep, by the way. Do not mistake my take on this. It's ridiculous. I'm really shaken right now. This is the next tweet. I was just visited by two plainclothes police officers from California Highway Patrol at my home. They said they came here on behalf of the Capitol Police and accused me of threatening AOC on Twitter yesterday. This is provably false. So you, go back up to what we just saw. Yeah. So this is all he said. Her response was incredibly underwhelming, to say the very least. So <laughs> someone decided that what he's... Now, the reason being is, I'm sure this is some sort of a supporter of AOC that contacted the Capitol Hill police and probably lied. But the fact that they could just come to your house without any proof that you... It's not like he's saying, this lady deserves to die. She must be stopped. We have to stop. None of that. None of that. Mm -hmm. None of that underwhelming to say the least which, which is, is a very mild <laughs> criticism it is this is just my opinion i think it was most likely a crazy person that is angry at this guy for not towing the liberal line yeah because he's a liberal journalist yeah or a podcaster that, that's the interesting thing <laughs> oh no oh no when you have a hammer and sickle on your fucking oh no dude when you're when you're literally a communist and you get called a liberal by joe rogan that's so bad i mean it's joe rogan everyone's a liberal Ugh, i don't get it it's just liberal or something i don't know it says queer in their profile so obviously they must be like a lib or something what an embarrassingly bad segment of journalism joe rogan he botched my entire story called me a liberal and proceeded to punch left i'm a communist next time don't use my story to push your idiotic baby brain agenda how pathetic where's the original uh, tweet because I think this person was like asking uh, I don't know what their pronouns are by the way so I don't I don't see it anywhere here it's gonna try to be as uh, gender neutral as possible but originally when uh, they were tweeting as it turns out they didn't even go to him over his own tweet it was a reply to this tw it, it was a reply to his tweet so I was harassed and integrated by state security forces because of a reply to my tweet I can't control replies this is some next level bullshit 100% by the way uh, I am full-blown fully on uh, their side with respect to what happened it's fucking ridiculous even if it's their tweet it's still ridiculous like because they didn't tweet anything that was terrible they just straight up said it was like underwhelming like they didn't say anything that was bad here's the original tweet with the video oh here it is on April 1st AOC did a live stream with Michael Miller the head of the Jewish Community Relations Council in New York she was asked about peace between Israelis and Palestinians her response was incredibly underwhelming to say the least I haven't even seen this video. I'm gonna go ahead and assume, judging by AOC's track record on like Israel Palestine and uh, what she has said on this issue, I'm gonna go ahead and say underwhelming is something I have said in the past as well about AOC's point of view. Let's watch it actually. I wanna see this. What actions do you think can be taken to support California Highway Patrol, please don't come to my house. I, I, I do think this is underwhelming. Movements towards- Or maybe it's not underwhelming, we'll see. Peace, uh, both between Israelis and Palestinians, as well as 
within the entire region, such as uh, the Abraham Accords. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, earlier just now, you and I were, were, were talking about the what and the how. Yes. And I think that when we talk about establishing peace, um, centering people's humanities, protecting people's rights, it's, it's not just about the what and the, the end goal, which often gets a lot of focus. Um, but I actually think it's much more about the how and the way that we are coming together and how we are, how we interpret that what and how we act uh, in, you know, the actions that we take to get to that what. And so what this really is about is that it's a question more than anything else about process. I mean, she's like, she's like doing a little bit of judo there, right? Like a little bit of dodges (laughs) and, and trying to say something that is uh i mean it's just trying to give an answer that like is as inoffensive as possible okay anyway ridiculous that fucking cops showed up uh at this person's doorstep for literally this or for the fact that someone uh responded in a violent way to that tweet the tweet that prompted the investigation in which the queer alamode account was tagged it was a tweeted by another account the particular tweet was taken down from twitter like it's wild that people are rushing to be like uh you know this was aoc at fault here really like you think you think aoc's like i can't believe i got criticism over the internet please go ahead talk about you know growing, growing up when we grew up when you talk about liberalism it means something different than it does today. And there's a difference between a classical liberal and a leftist. And what we're seeing more of in this country is those terms intertwined and they're very different things. Yes. Uh, and leftists are kind of what we're seeing more of, uh, which is grabbing this control, restrictions on, on freedom of speech, restrictions on owning firearms, restrictions on... Yes, bro. Liberalism is when you fucking uh, ask. I mean, even I am not a liberal, but I don't believe that this is what fucking liberalism represents. Like, I'm sorry. It's just like, what the fuck? Yeah, liberalism is when you make sure the state police comes knocking down your door for a fucking tweet. Might be quote unquote dangerous. Yeah. Uh, especially when they throw in dangerous to the children. That's the other other key when uh, talking about it. But then they take power and guess who's buying who's buying all the expensive houses and, and has that has the power and the control oh those same people that were fighting for the little guy a little while yeah. ago and talking about all these restrictions that we needed to place on uh, some of these more natural rights that uh, are inherent at birth namely to be able to defend ourselves and our family defend that gift of life yeah like when a marxist starts making leftism is when a fucking hammer and sickle leftist gets uh the police state up their ass that's what leftism is all about boys i love doing a leftism by calling the fucking police on tweets or defending cops uh knocking on people's doors for tweets making money and buys million dollar houses oh, did that happen oh, recently yeah it did uh, yeah yeah that's what happens you, what you're happens. a marxist if you're a marxist you're not buying million dollar houses you're not on a fucking real estate buying <laughs> that's and not marxism that's why i, I talk to well, I, all the, as, as often as i possibly can i talk about the importance of studying our history, putting that requisite time, energy, and effort into studying the past so we can make decisions that... because we have this responsibility to make decisions uh, for future generations. And if we haven't put that time into studying our history, and if what you know about a certain uh, uh, event or the a, fuck's he a, talking uh, about? a certain issue is based on someone else's tweet that you just... Okay, the irony is that uh, Marxism is all about gatekeeping. And the more you gatekeep who's a communist and who's not, the, the higher your power is, your Marxist power is. Karl Marx, number one Marxist, like literally always gatekeeping. Okay, actually, fuck that. I'm a better Marxist than Karl Marx. You don't want to know why? Because Karl Marx, fake socialist. Boom. Literally wanted everyone. He wrote the fucking Communist Manifesto. Have you ever seen that? It's like a pamphlet, bitch. You want more people to be able to accessibly learn about your your worldview? What are you, fucking stupid? So, you know, I'm the true Marxist. Dumbass. It's retweeted, and all of a sudden, that's your opinion of something that's going to affect multiple generations down the line, particularly their abilities to defend themselves and their families or to, to, to start a business or whatever it, it might be. Well, you owe it to put down the phone, to get into these books, realize, hey, what do, why, 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 is, why are these amendments in place? Why is this important? Um, and from the inception of this country up until today, people have died to give you the right to be able to make these decisions, to follow your dreams, to have these options and opportunities. Not they only gave that, up everything. People have died supporting these things that you support. These things, you, you like when people are really into Marxism, like... Yeah, dude, your idea, yeah. Joe Rogan, find a single ideology. Find a single political movement that has led to zero death challenge, okay? What the fuck is this take, dude? Politics is the distribution of power, okay? Whether that power implies uh, money, capital, influence, 
or whether that power implies violence, the power to do violence, okay, justifiably do violence. So it is impossible to find a political movement that has led to zero fucking deaths. You need to learn what happened when that was the rule of law because it's a terrible, terrible hit. I think one problem that happened with Joe Rogan moving to Texas is that he has a lot of doo-doo brain dipshits around him now. Like, at least in California, there were some, like, annoying fucking liberals that could keep him in check from now, uh, every now and again, make him feel like he's not intellectually superior to anyone. But now everyone else around him is like, yeah, you're right, Joe Rogan, I fucking, uh, yeah, communism is when Voo is on iPhone. And he's like, well, actually, that's not true. Communism is when, you know, your ideology is murderous and dangerous. And like, so now he, I feel like he thinks he's a lot smarter now. Like there was that never ending voice in the back of his head that said like, no, you're a dumb ape. Okay. You're surrounded by people that are much more intelligent than you. And I feel like that voice is getting silenced now in Texas for some fucking weird reason. And he's like way more condescending about the idiotic shit that he says. Like, look at this. This is like kind of, this is kind of weird. Like I, I'm not, I'm a little surprised by how Joe Rogan is like so convinced of his own uh, idiocy here have died supporting these things that you support these things you, you like when people are really into marxism like you need to learn what happened when that was the rule of law because it's a terrible like when marxism was the rule of law like what the fuck does that mean dog what is like when marxism was the rule of law even a baby-brained dipshit like Mr. Lobster Jordan Peterson it will not get caught saying something as idiotic as like, when Marxism was the rule of law, like what the fuck? What is the Marxism rule of law, dude? Terrible history. <laughs> it's horrible, but it seems good. Like the idea that everybody should have something. It should be equal for all and all the workers should be even and everybody should have equal things. Well, you know what happens then? You, you, you don't have the same amount of effort because there's a reason why some people work harder than others because they realize <laughs> you can actually get further ahead. There's a competition and that competition fuels innovation. It fuels all sorts of things. There's incentives, oh, yeah. there's incentives to discipline. You wake up an hour early. He's like trying to repeat the fucking like anti-communist, anti-socialist, anti-Marxist uh, talking points, but he's butchering them. You know what I mean? Like Marxism when the rule of law is, uh, you know, when no one wants work, uh, there is no incentive to work, which which is why no country that uh, tried to uh, restructure their economy in a way that offered workers more power was ever able to innovate, obviously. It's just stopped. You know, there was no leap forward or anything. There was just no, uh, there was no innovation in the USSR or uh, China or, or any other countries that uh, at least try to offer more power, maybe not the entirety of the means of production to their workers, but more power to their fucking workers. Earlier than you're the next guy, you do it seven days a week, you got seven hours of work, that, that guy doesn't have in. Yep, where you wake up seven hours earlier like Jocko does than everybody else, something like that. <laughs> yes. uh, but yeah, you have that option. You have yes. the option. I can write books. You can do this. Like we have these yes. amazing freedoms. And when have you ever- Communism is when you have no freedom, literally, or Marxism. That's so fucking ironic, dude. The entire purpose, and this is why some theorists or some professors will say that Marxism had an inherently individualistic aspect to it because Marxism is all about creating opportunities for individuals to celebrate their own individual freedoms by distributing their share of work more appropriately and more evenly, therefore allowing people to literally go from, in the words of Karl Marx, go from fishing in the afternoon to working at the factory in the evening and to have time for themselves to read and write if they want to in between hunting, okay? I mean, I'm butchering that, but it's literally about maximizing uh, and, and emboldening workers. It's literally about maximizing the time that people have for themselves so they feel more fulfilled with their daily lives. The entire purpose of identifying alienation and trying to eliminate alienation from your labor is straight up giving people more autonomy so that they feel better about their work. So anyone who says like, uh, you know, oh dude, no, actually a uh, fucking communism is when Vuvuzela, no iPhone. It's actually uh, capitalism that offers you the tremendous uh, freedom of choosing your fucking weight, different form of weight slavery. So you can literally toil away 80% of your lives in authoritarian constructs, such as the American workplace or the work capitalist workplace with no say over what you can and can't do as a literal fucking weight slave because if you don't do that, you will literally die and not be able to put a fucking roof over your head or put food on your table. 
That's the true freedom, brother, is some of the more idiotic takes I hear from most capitalists. You choose where you work. Oh yeah, totally. Like, uh, you know, the fucking Uber Eats driver who is, uh, you know, disabled and that, that person chose to uh, uh, be born into a poor family. And then that person simply chose to work fucking Uber Eats and, you know, barely make $3 after every delivery. That's why he was choosing to work 15 hour shifts and not get fucking healthcare coverage. It's all the choices that he made, dude. You know, I'm so lucky because I chose to be a Twitch streamer. And uh, that's why I make the amount of money I do. Because I just chose it, you know? It's just that easy, bro. Just literally go on Indeed and slide the fucking Indeed slider. Go to Indeed, the application, where you can find jobs. And move the slider to Twitch streamer, brother. That's how it works. I've ever read a book, whether fiction or non, or studied history, where the people that put names on lists, the people that restrict rights, the people that confiscate firearms are the good guys. In any of those movies, even let's None. just say fiction. Yeah. Never. Yeah. Never. Th exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that should be a clue but right there. But it seems like when you say it the right way, if you restrict the rights of these people to have guns, then there'll no, not be any mass shootings because there'll be no guns. Like, oh, okay. And someone just retweets that. Just, that becomes yeah. their opinion rather Yay. than, hold on, let me look at the, if this was even the issue, uh, let me look take at the, look at the FBI crime statistics, the actual ones, and be like, oh, why are they going after this one thing that causes almost nothing? They should be going after hammers and baseball bats. Or if they were really wanted to save lives, you should make sure that every single phone- What? Bro, what the fuck does that take? Wait, so the actual way to fucking stop violence from happening is not addressing the root causes of crime, which is socioeconomic conditions, which is something that we've known about since fucking ancient Greece, okay? And instead, it's to stop and restrict, what, the sales of hammers and baseball bats? Hammers and baseball bats have a specific utility beyond blunt objects that you can use to murder people, okay? Guns don't. What the fuck? Even in the own world that he's trying to construct, He's literally making an argument for stricter gun control. Phone just turned off when you got in your car and just what didn't, yeah. wasn't allowed to operate. If you really cared about the children, right. or at least start 18 and under, no texting. This thing turns off when you get in a car. If you were right. really concerned about saving lives. So it's a disingenuous argument from the beginning. Dude, I too remember a time when no cell phones existed where literally no murder happened. Guys, cell phones don't exist. Murder rate magically goes to zero, baby. <laughs> He just fucking literally made an argument about how right-wingers love freedom and then simultaneously was like, you need to shut off your child's way of communicating and, uh, you know, talking to the rest of the world, okay? What you need to do instead is ban hammers, ban baseball bats, and then stop your fucking kids from communicating with people. This is the American way, baby. I mean, communism is when iPhone. He is right about that. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it sounds so good. Catch new episodes. I think his point is that texting and driving kills people, so turn off the phones, but it's still obviously a dumb shit point by him. Oh, he was talking about texting and driving? I thought he was talking about, like, uh, fucking phones are uh, causing people, like, kids uh, being on the internet is causing people to fucking die. I didn't even realize what he was saying. My bad. Shouldn't he say to ban cars then? Yeah, I don't know. He was using as a sarcastic point to say make fun of leftists saying that they want to save lives. Well, here's the sarcastic point he should have made. Fucking seatbelts. Idiotic leftists that want to fucking save lives by uh, enforcing the radical seatbelt agenda. I mean, seriously. Belittling people working uh, people working mundane, uninteresting jobs is unnecessary. I've heard an occasional comment throughout many of his podcasts. Small things like if you work in such a job, you didn't struggle to succeed and settle for mediocrity. And I feel sorry for people in those jobs. Imagine doing that all day. Latest one being there are a lot of people working, unfulfilling jobs. It's sad. I really wish Joe would just stick to interviewing interesting and funny people without the need to belittle people who are struggling. It really strikes me as low blow telling people on the opposite end of the socioeconomic hierarchy, people which fill necessary roles in society would not effectively operate without. They're basically lazy fucks have wasted their lives and he feels sorry for them. We get it, Joe. You struggled through a hard uh, upbringing, overcame adversity through hard work and determination, love your job and life, and have achieved the American dream. We've heard the story dozens of times now. Good as fuck for you. Every human is different has different genetics, circumstances, and luck. Not everyone is, or for that matter, can even be Joe the Conqueror. Honestly, though, who sits on a mountaintop and flings shit at the people down below? What part of that is necessary? Does the ego really need it when you're already at the summit? He worked for one summer, if even, on a construction site and made it sound like he went through hell. It's fucking hilarious. He has no idea what real life is like. As Tim Dillon said, he's a Hollywood elitist. Damn, juicers invading the fucking Joe Rogan subreddit. What's the argument against the profit motive? What do you mean, what's the argument against the profit motive? The profit motive incentivizing... The, the notion that uh, the profit motive incentivizes innovation is an idiotic one, especially when the opposite happens regularly especially in industries where there is an there is inelastic demand. Healthcare is the great example for it. There are plenty of motivators uh, for innovation that do not revolve around profit. As a matter of fact, 
when you eliminate uh, the profit motive from a specific industry or just anything really, innovation fosters. And the reason for why innovation fosters in that situation is because you have more opportunity to fucking fail. You're not forced to make short-term innovative goals and you can focus on failing over and over again until you accomplish massive world-changing technological achievements. The profit motive, unfortunately, creates made-to-break technology and, you know, it gives you uh, marginally better iPhones year over year. That's the best way to do it. What is this? Announcing a 14-day GTRP cooldown. Hey, guys, today we'll do something we've been wanting to test for a while. There's really a 14-day cooldown ban on all GTRP submissions on the subreddit. <gasps> Oh no! I mean, I don't give a shit. Yeah, I, I fucking agree. LSF is like, 